Welcome to ATRA, Voices from the Field. This sustainable agriculture podcast is presented by the National Center for Appropriate Technology with support from USDA Rural Business Cooperative. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of ATRA, Voices from the Field. We're talking this week with Linda Coffey, who is an agriculture specialist with the National Center for Appropriate Technology. And Linda's going to be talking today about um, a new publication that she's written for the ATRA Sustainable Agriculture site. And about, it's called Working with Your Meat Processor, which is actually a pretty um, common subject among producers, right, Linda? Yes. Uh, if you're selling, If you're selling meat to customers, or even if you're processing meat for your own family's use, as, as we've always done, working with a meat processor is really important. So why don't you tell us a little bit about um, how you came to write this particular publication? Yeah, you know, at Outro, we always try to write pieces that we think will help our, our clients, the producers. And so we're always kind of thinking, what would the producer need? But this one came about based off a client's question. Um, I subscribe to the Niche Meat Processor Assistance Network Listserv. That's a mouthful. I'll say MPAN, but the initials are N-M-P-A-N. And it's a listserv where producers and processors and regulatory people are, are talking about meat processing issues. So the client question was, um, do you have any advice on what to do if there are questionable processing practices from a local butcher? And the client went on to say, I, I'm, I'm not fully convinced that I received my carefully raised pasture pork from the butcher. So I thought, let's pose the question to the processors here with, with the idea, uh, how can producers work more effectively with processors and, and vice versa? Because I do hear complaints. I didn't get all my meat back is maybe the most common one. So I posted this on November 25th, uh, 2015. And by December 8th, I'd received about 20 responses, mostly from processors, and they were passionate. And it was clear that it had struck a nerve. Like this complaint about I didn't get back all my meat or the processor messed up my order was really frustrating to the processors. And as I listened to their comments, and they're really thoughtful and and helpful, you know, they gave me some, they pointed me to some resources that were really good. And the thing they did was kind of open my eyes because I'd always looked at it from the producer point of view and not really understood the processor point of view. And so it was really, yeah, it was really eye opening. It just kind of, very valuable to have those ears and to have those responses back. And as I said, I could see that it had touched a nerve and the point kept coming back when one person said the issue can be avoided through education, communication, and better understanding of the meat processors process. And I thought, well, this is where we come in because we could help with that education and the better understanding of the process. And so I took some of what the um, produ- uh, the processors said. I took information that they had pointed me to. I found some more, and I particularly focused on this piece on that meat yield question. You know, because what the processors kept saying was producers just don't understand how their cutting instructions impact yield, how the animal they bring to us impacts yield. And so there's this mistrust that doesn't need to be there if they just understood if the pro- if the producer just understood what the animal really should yield and what the factors are. And so this piece was built with a lot of help from those processors and from the the people at MPAN. And I feel like it does a nice job of explaining some of those factors and of trying to help producers understand the processor point of view so that they can have more respect and therefore more respect for each other, a better working relationship. And that's needed. So. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
No, go, uh, what I was just going to say, David Scott was enormously helpful. He's um, a fellow NCAT staff member, and he raises sheep and markets lamb. So he's got a lot of experience with working with a processor because he produces and sells directly to to customers. So he uses a USDA plant, which I've never done. And so he was really helpful, too, in uh, contributing to this. Well, I was just going to ask if you'd had any uh, personal experience in that in the area yourself. I know that you you do raise um, goats, I believe, right? I, I raise goats and sheep, but we also always raise our own beef and pork. And so, yes, I have yeah. used, but ah. I've only used custom plants. And I, I also hadn't really understood uh, completely meat yield. Um, yeah, it's it's just good to have that processor point of view. I'd never thought about the difficulty of having well-trained employees or not, you know. Uh, there's just other things that the processors brought up to me that made me stop and think. So, Linda, are there are there other resources that you're aware of in addition to the new publication that, you know, listeners might be able to check out on this issue? Yes. Well, the end of the publication, we always put references and resources in there, and I compiled a really good short list of excellent resources, including some that the processors showed me and some that I found in my search. Um, there's also some related ATRA publications. I mentioned Dave Scott earlier, who raises sheep and sells meat. He has put together one I'm so impressed with. It's called Direct Marketing Lamb, a Pathway. But it's not just good for people raising lamb, because he he discusses a lot in that publication about working with a processor and about marketing meat and just I think anyone raising beef or hogs or goats would find this valuable. So don't um, don't steer away from it just because it's only about lamb. So that's uh, direct marketing lamb, a pathway. Dave also has done a video called Creating an Excellent Relationship with Your Processor. That one's really good. It's about 23 minutes. And he's done, again, for the sheep uh video and a publication about how to tell when your lamb is finished that would also pertain to to cattle and we have others there are uh, a lamb cut guide for direct marketers we have marketing alternatives for pork and uh, beef marketing alternatives we also have a small scale poultry processing publication and we have a database on our site for people who need to find a, a poultry processing plant so, and I really encourage people interested in the subject to look also at the resources that MPAN has, and I link to I link to them in the resources section of this publication. I, I'm really I'm really pleased to have this publication out there, and I hope that it serves the purpose that that I intended. And I really want to thank MPAN and all the processors who helped to to write this thing. And I have. A, a, a list of professionals who were so helpful. And I'd like to mention Dr. Greg Renfro also. He had, had a PowerPoint that I found online that was so helpful in, in putting out specific examples with beef to show differences in cut yields. That was very eye-opening for me. And uh, Catherine Quanbeck and Abra Bryn, Joe Cloud, Mike Lorenz, John Hamm, Walter Jeffries, and other processors who were really instrumental in getting this done. So I hope that the producers will find it valuable. I think maybe some of their customers will too. Uh, I know one way that we've done the meat business is to sell a live animal and take it to a custom plant. And then the customer pays for the processing and gets the meat. Well, it would be helpful for them to understand about how much meat they'll get back and how the instructions they give will impact that. And I just hope that this publication serves to um, strengthen relationships between producers and their processors. Terrific. And we should uh, we should say that the publication and the other ATRA resources that you mentioned are available online 
on the ATRA website, which is www.atra.ncat.org. That's www.attra.ncat.org. And this publication, like most publications on the ATRA site, is can be downloaded for free. And if you go to the ATRA site, you can search for it in the livestock marketing section or the local food section. And there's also a search field where you can type in the title, Working with Your Meat Processor, to find it on the ATRA site. And I want to thank you for uh, being with us uh, this morning, Linda. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Rich.